welcome back in this video we will make sure that we can see the correct items that we are trying to buy from the vendor as you can see right here we already implemented the functionality for showing the amount of items but right now it's not showing the correct items it's just showing um, a secret key which is default sprite at the moment so we need to make sure that it takes the actual items we have on the vendor right now we are using a bag and a health potion but that is not reflected in the vendor window at the moment so let's try to open up our vendor scripts here let's see here we have the window and we also have our um, let's see a vendor actually let's see well it's already open so we are interacting and we are creating the pages and on that we are calling add item and that add item is on the button here right there so if we're setting it active we also need to do some other things so that we can see the icon and let's do that right here so we, let's put with setting it active once we'll set everything so the icon that's right should be the same as the vendors items item dot icon there so this one's called items let's rename it to my item just to keep the the same uh, throughout the project so we call my on for in front of properties uh, what else let's set the title title the text and mm, i think we have something with some color at some point and let's just see if we can find something where we're using that there inside the item script we have this get description where we're setting some format thing um actually let's try with the loop button don't we have something there let's see here quality Sorry, I'm just <laughs> looking through to see if there's some easy thing we can copy. There it is, I think. Yeah, there's a title on the loot window. Okay, there it is. So let's just take this line of code from the loot window inside the add loot function and copy that string format. Go back to your vendor button, where is it there? And paste it in there. Um, and for now, we can just instead of quality that my color, we can actually say instead of all this, we can say vendor item dot my item dot my quality. And here we should also use vendor item dot title. So vendor item dot my item dot my title there. Okay, so. I'm not going to explain this again, but in general, yeah, it sets the correct color for for the item. So now we're setting the icon, we're setting the title, and we're setting the game object active. Is there anything else we need to do? We need to set a price, but we don't have that at the moment. We'll add that later. And the quant quant quantity is also going to be set. Let us try this then. So I save this, and let's try to play. See, we click on the vendor, and yay, we have a bag with a price of 10 and a health potion with a price of 10 because we're not setting the price at the moment. So let's go for the price first. Um, we need to go to our items. Pre-script somewhere. This is price, and we... Here, there's different... Wow, I'm in the sprite folder. That's why I'm confused. Items there. Uh, let's open up the item script. And close down these we don't need. Loop window, yes. And up here we can make a new let's make a property or actually let's make a private integer called price. So I'm thinking I only want the price in whole numbers, so it's not ten point five gold or something, it's just going to be ten gold. Um, if you want to, you can of course incorporate different currencies like uh, gold, silver, and copper, or copper or something. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna say this is gold. The price is just one thing. We have gold. I'll serialize this, and I will control RE on it, 
to make sure that I can get the price from the outside and I'm going to rename this to my price. So everything is going to have a price and you might ask why. Well, let's say we have a hat, we find it and we can't buy it anywhere, but we should also be able to sell it. So the price on the hat is what we can get when we sell it or half the price or something. Let's, let's just keep the price on all items so they're all sellable. Um, yeah, where was I? Yes, we need to set that price. Let's see here, the vendor button. So let's see, uh, price dot text equal to vendor item dot my item dot price there and we need to convert it to a string because this is text and this is an integer so we need to convert it to a string by using to string with that done we can save and let's try to set a price on some things we have a prefab folder with some items and we are right now using a potion and a bag so the price of the bag can be two and the price of the, oh, actually let's make it five and make the price of the potion two so let's see what happens now when we try to open it so the bag is five and this two okay it just says a number i would love to have it say the price so let's say here like that so symbol just write the price with space and uh, a colon and space And let's see, there we go. So now we can see price five and two. Later we can write gold or something. Let's see what currency we're going to implement. Also to show it on the player. Yes. So what about the quantity? Well, yeah, let's actually also add that right here inside the add item. Let's say if our vendor item dot, um, let's see unlimited okay so if it isn't unlimited then we have a quantity if it's unlimited we don't want to put in the quantity anyway so we say quantity dot text is equal to vendor item dot quantity to string let's just rename this one to my quantity save so when we add an item, if it isn't unlimited, we will set a quantity on it. So let's just make sure that we have a vendor with, uh, let's say the potions might not be, might be unlimited, but the bag isn't, for example. So let's see here what happens. Oh, it's set to zero. Wow. And um, let's say we have five bags we can buy or something. So now there's a little five here. And there's nothing on the uh, the potion because we have unlimited amount of them, but we can only buy five bags. And um, so there are some other things we need to take into consideration here. Um, for example, if our um, quantity is larger than zero, then we would like to do all this. But if it's not, then we don't need to show any of these things. So that was very badly explained. Let's, yeah, I'll just write, make the if set statement. Maybe that makes more sense for you. So yeah, if our vendor item that quantity is larger than zero, well, then we can do all this. There's no reason, if the quantity isn't larger than zero, then there's no items show. Let's say it's, it's, it's zero, then the, there's no items. Or if the vendor quant quantity is zero and uh, we can actually just, if we put it like this, let's, let's, let's just add the function. So you can see right now we will not be able to see our potion. And the reason that we can't see our potion, it's because that our potion has no quantity. But if it's unlimited, then there's no reason to set a quantity. So we don't have to put anything there. So we're going to put in the or statement here and say vendor item dot uh, my quantity is zero and the vendor item is unlimited like that okay so if we save it now we should still be able to see the potion and we have sorted out that we don't want to show items that we have bought out let's say we have the bag here 
and we buy all the bags, then we don't need to show it. That's why this if statement here makes sure that we don't show the bag when the quantity is zero. Okay, so now we have items, we have the right icons, we can show how many we have, we can show the name and the price, and we can show um, unlimited items as well. Um, so that's it for this video. In the next one, we are going to add uh, pages so we can have more items because um, there's a problem here. If I add more items, then, um, then what is it like? How many was there? Maybe you already remember. Wow. Is it 10 items? Yeah, it's 10. If we add more than five and five, then we're not going to be able to show them. So we need to add the pages as we did with the loot window. But that's for the next video. So thank you very much for watching. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember that Inscope Studios is a community founded page. So please consider clicking the support link on the screen to see how you can support me and get something back in return.